In the last several videos, we've been looking at functionals involving two independent variables, so two dimensional problems. Now we're going to look at functionals where we also have two dependent variables. Turns out that this case is very straightforward. We just get another Euler equation for the additional dependent variable, just like the original dependent variable. So it looks like this. So let's say we have a functional where the integrand is a function of x and y. So two independent variables, u and v, those are the two dependent variables. And then first derivatives of u and v with respect to x and y. So in that case, you get the Euler equation we had before, partial f partial u minus partial partial x of partial f partial u sub x minus partial partial y of partial f partial u sub y is equal to zero. So that's exactly the same Euler equation we had previously for the case with two independent variables and one dependent variable. Now we simply have an additional Euler equation where the u's have been traded out for v's. So for any number of dependent variables, you get that same number of Euler equations corresponding to the number of independent variables and the orders of the derivatives that you have on the dependent variables with respect to those independent variables. And those equations are all coupled. So in this case, we have two coupled second order partial differential equations for our two two-dimensional dependent variables. The boundary conditions are the same. So you either have fixed boundary conditions, known values of u and v at the boundaries, or you have natural boundary conditions. This first one being precisely the same as what we had in the previous case, and then this one being the same as that one, but now with u being replaced with v. Okay, so let's do an example. So let's say we have two functions, u of x and v of x. So they're one-dimensional, but there's two dependent variables, one independent variable and two dependent variables. So here is that functional, i of u and v. It's an integral over x from 0 to pi over 4 of v prime squared plus v prime times u prime plus u squared. We have two fixed conditions on u. So u at 0 is 1 and u at pi over 4 is 2. And we have one fixed condition for v, and that's at x is equal to 0, v is equal to 3 halves. So we don't have a given boundary condition at pi over 4 for v, so we'll use a natural boundary condition in that case. So as always, the first step is to look at your integrand and to see what ingredients are in there to see if we have the appropriate Euler equation or equations in this case for that situation. So we have u's and u primes, and we have v primes. And again, they're only functions of x. So we have for u's and u primes this Euler equation, the partial f partial u minus ddx of partial f partial u prime is equal to zero. Then for the v's, x's, v's, and v primes, we would have the same Euler equation, partial f partial v minus ddx of partial f partial v prime is equal to zero. Now you notice there are no v's explicitly in our integrand of the functional. So this term will be zero, but nevertheless, that's the, that would be the general form. So if we evaluate this Euler equation and simplify, you'll get this, v double prime minus two u is equal to zero. And from this Euler equation and evaluating that, simplifying, you get u double prime plus two v double prime is equal to zero. So we have two second order coupled linear constant coefficient homogeneous ordinary differential equations for u and v. Now in that long list of adjectives for these equations, you'll notice that they are coupled. So this equation involves u and v, this equation involves u and v. So up until now, it's just been more of the same, which is why I kind of went through that rather quickly. But now we need to think about how are we gonna solve these two coupled second order ODEs for u and v? Well, if we can somehow combine them and eliminate one of the dependent variables, we'd have an equation for one of the variables we can solve and then somehow solve for the other variable. So let's see how we might be able to do that. Well, you'll notice here we have a v double prime and here we have a v double prime. So let's solve this first equation for v double prime. That would be two u and substitute that into here. That gives us an equation for u. So it'd be u double prime plus four u is equal to zero that we can solve. Again, it's just a second order, linear constant coefficient, homogeneous ODE, and we get the solution, and it's an integration constant times cosine of 2x plus another integration times sine of 2x. Remember, we have two fixed boundary conditions for u at both ends. We can apply those, 
and we get the two integration constants, which gives us this solution for u of x cosine 2x plus 2 sine 2x. So that's the solution for u of x. Now if we have u of x, and we look at this first equation, v double prime is, is equal to 2u. We have u. We could integrate twice to get v as a function of x. So if we do that, we get two integration constants. So it's minus a half cosine 2x minus sine 2x plus c3x plus c4. Then boundary conditions, we know v at x is equal to 0. That gives us one of the integration constants. And then we need a natural boundary condition at x is pi over 4. For this particular scenario, the natural boundary condition is partial f partial v prime is equal to 0 at pi over 4. And partial f partial v prime is u prime plus 2v prime. So that has to be equal to 0 at x is pi over 4. Once again, apply the fixed boundary condition at x is equal to 0, as well as our natural boundary condition at x is pi over 4. And we get the solution for v minus a half cosine 2x minus sine 2x plus 2. And so that's the solution for both the u and the v. Those are the stationary functions of that original functional that involved two dependent variables.